Good morning, and welcome to the Church of St. Gregory the Great as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone to please wear your mask over your nose and over your mouth. It's very important that it's worn over both. Hopefully we're in the home stretch. So out of consideration for each other and the safety of all, please wear your mask over nose and your mouth. Thank you. We come to hear God's voice and be nourished in word and sacrament. Our Mass intention for today is for the soul, repose of the soul of Jan Maratia. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Dominic. Today is the last day of the month-long events and activities dedicated to the protection of the unborn. Just as it seemed that the tide in favor of the unborn was turning in the last four years, evil has struck once again with full force and just in the last two weeks with executive orders against the sanctity of life and the family. During his homily at the opening mass of the annual National Prayer Vigil for Life this past Thursday, the head of the U.S. Bishops Committee, the chairman on pro-life activities, Archbishop Nauman writes, Biden proudly professes to be a devout Catholic, even as he promises to codify Roe v. Wade and seeks to force American taxpayers and funds abortions and desires to force the Little Sisters of the Poor to provide contraceptives and abortive families in their employee health plans. Sadly, Biden is a perfect example of the religiously and ethically incoherent straddle claiming to believe that human life begins at conception and personally opposing abortion while doing everything within his power to promote and institutionalize abortion, not only in the USA, but also around the world. In today's readings, we hear God saying, whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. Jesus tells us, we may sit in darkness for a while, but we have seen the great light through our faith. This victorious light will remove the darkness afflicting our world. Jesus, until then, as we dedicate this Mass for the protection of the unborn, let us ask God for courage, strength, and perseverance for conversion and repentance of all those involved against life. And so in God's name, we say, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In order to worthily worship our God, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have all authority and you allow us to share in your divinity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have anointed us, prophets, to be ministers to our culture. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with praise, adoration, and worship as we surrender our lives to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the Creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we whom you have made stewards of creation may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, 
a prophet like me, will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin, and to him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. 
but a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. History has a tendency to repeat itself, and we're getting ready to go through another repetition if we don't watch it. You ever wonder why history repeats itself? It's because here in the material world, we're only focused on the material things, but there is a spiritual world that has been going on since the beginning of creation. Jesus shows us that he has authority over this spiritual world and that he's given that authority to you you share in the divinity of Christ because of this Eucharist. It's important that we understand how this spiritual world works. Satan is not all-powerful. Satan is a created being. He has minions and dominions and lots of other demons that affect us and oppress us and cause us to do things that we shouldn't be doing. But he doesn't have authority over us because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. And you are the body of Christ. 
his very body. One of those demons is the spirit of Asidia. We know that there are seven deadly sins. Asidia is like sloth. He's part of that system. And Asidia is one that says, you know, it's really not your responsibility. Let somebody else do the job. But you have been baptized into Christ. You have been given the fullness of who God is. You have been anointed priest, prophet, king, made a minister of reconciliation. You have become an ambassador for Christ in the world, and through your confirmation, you have become a bold witness to the gospel. What we see in the culture today, what Father just shared about President Biden, he has let his baptismal grace go off the pasture. Is he Catholic? Yes. This morning he received communion. The same Jesus that we were going to receive here in a half an hour, he received. We have the responsibility to take the prophetic call of our baptism, become those prophets to our culture. We don't have authority over anybody in government, but Jesus does. What are we called to do? Paul shares with us this phase that we're getting ready to go into because Paul experienced it himself when he was a man of an intense prayer. The Old Testament prophets did not have any of the writings of Scripture. They were writing them. Paul meditated on the lives of the men in the Old Testament and he internalized all of that. He was once a murderer of Christians and God changed his heart. And in the year 53, 54, he is in this intense time of prayer in Ephesus and he has this sense of what's coming. And he tells his Corinthian brothers, writes them a letter, we are getting ready to reduce be reduced by the Romans. God tells him what's coming. Jesus had that same prophetic sense. He wept over Jerusalem for its impending destruction. Paul is writing, don't consider the time that you're in to be normal. He's encouraging young men and young women not even to get married, but instead spend time with the Lord and devote yourself to what is going to be needed in your life. We're living in that age now. Paul, in the year 54, knew what was coming. Six years later, he's arrested by his own people, the Jews. And they would have killed him in Jerusalem, but they found out that he was a Roman citizen. He gets sent to Rome, and Nero kills him in the year 66. The book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, had not even yet been written until after Paul was killed and Mark thought, I need to write this stuff down because we are getting ready to replace history. And sure enough, in his time, four years later, Rome is sacked, the temp not Rome, Jerusalem is sacked and the temple is destroyed in the year 70 and we still have not rebuilt it almost 2,000 years later. What is our response to this time? This time when Catholics are supporting the murder of children, not only in our country, but throughout the world. What is our response? Psalm 95 is our response. Probably the most prayed psalm in all of this altar. Every morning, the priests and the deacons 
the nuns, and all of the laity who pray the Liturgy of the Hours, we start off with this psalm. It gives us the pattern to create an attitude of prophetic intercession. We come before the Lord with shouts of joy. Imagine what's going to happen next Sunday at the Super Bowl. All of those guys are getting ready to play a football game. What are they doing? They're raising their hands. They're pounding on each other's shoulder pads. They're speaking to each other and they're saying, get ready for the fight. The fight, what is it? It's a football game. But the emotion, the intensity of what's happening, they're preparing themselves for the next three hours. That's what Psalm 95 tells us to do. Prepare yourself to enter into the very presence of the Lord. Then come before him with praise and thanksgiving. We praise God. We tell him how good he is, not because he needs to know it, but because we need to well it up in us that God has all the authority in heaven and on earth. And we share in it because of this Mass. My job as a deacon to do, is, during Mass is to do four things. I introduce a time for you to repent to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. I then read the Gospels. And when I'm allowed, I preach. And I tell you what the Word of God is for today. Then I prepare the gifts. I take that bread and that wine, that material things, which represent your sins, your hopes, your dreams, all the things that you want, and we then bring them to the altar. I place your lives on the altar in the symbol of the bread and the wine. I then take a little bit of water, which represents the purity of Jesus, and I put a small drop, and I pray this prayer. Lord, by the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Father then takes that bread and that wine and he changes it by calling down the Holy Spirit upon it. And God answers his prayer every time and makes it into the real presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. I then call you to reconcile with one another the sign of peace. And Father and I, and a Eucharistic minister, take that very presence of Christ give it back to you now as his real answer to all of the material things that you're in problems, you're having difficulties with. You take him into your body to create an attitude of prophetic intercession to go forth and then at the end of Mass I say, go, proclaim the gospel of the Lord. This is what Psalm 95 is telling us. We praise God. We then fall in love with Jesus again. We come before him and we adore him. We realize that we are the very children of God called to be Christ's presence in the world. And then we worship him. We bend the knee before the Lord our maker and we surrender our lives to him, promising again that the rest of this week we are going to change our neighborhoods, bring people back to baptism, to their baptismal promises, evangelize, share Christ's real presence with our world, Catholics need to realize the power that we have, the authority that we have been given through our baptismal grace, through the entire sacramental system, and we need 
to take these sacraments of initiation and make them into sacraments of maturity where we become the real presence of Christ in our world because all of these things are showing us that we are being visited by the Lord. At the time of Jesus, they missed their, in, their visitation. Mother Mary told us 103 years ago at Fatima that we are entering into a time where God is going to make his self present to us in a profound way. And that is the prophecy that we have been living under as a church for 103 years. In fact, we believe so much in prophecy in our parish that we hang the picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe on our wall. And when you walk in, you're reading a prophecy that was put on the cloak of a peasant farmer, Juan Diego. You don't understand what it's saying because you don't read ancient Mayan. But that is a prophecy for all of the Americas. And we are living in a prophetic time right now. Do not miss the time of your visitation. Enter into God's real presence. Make your homes domestic churches so that they are full of light to our culture. Because if we don't change the attitudes of Catholics, our culture is going to miss God's presence and is going to change. Let us pray. Have them, stay seated. Stay seated. I'm going to pray a prayer. If you would like a copy of this, email me. Heavenly Father, you inspired your son Jesus, my Lord, to teach us that if I ask for your Holy Spirit, that you will surely give him to me. Father, I ask you to immerse me into the life of your Holy Spirit. I surrender my life and my will over to you, and I ask you to flood me with the love you share with your Son. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. I ask you also, Father, to renew me in me the anointing you gave me at my baptism when you anointed me with Jesus' charisms of priest, prophet, and king. Help me to live as a true common priest, leading others to worship of you. Help me to be a modern prophet by bringing your word into every situation. Help me live out Jesus' kingship to renew culture through your holy will. I ask this through Christ, my Lord. Heeding the call to be prophetic witnesses in this world, let us now profess our faith through the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, to the life of the world to come. Our faithful God hears the cry of the poor. With confidence, let us pre present our prayers. That religious sisters and brothers anxious about the things of the world serve the church and the world with holiness of body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a world in which those who are most vulnerable are so often overlooked and discarded, May we embrace and uphold the unconditional dignity of every human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders watch over the welfare of those whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Catholic schools may celebrate the richness of the Catholic faith that we have inherited, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our educators and school staff called to live a life of love and sacrifice during COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the faithful departed, especially Christine Harlow, Bill Allsbrook, Leonard Valencia, oh, Leonardo Valencia, Naomi Lyo, Maria Yanza, and Ted Yoakum, father of Father Lee. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all your petitions that you hold in the silence of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who deliver us from evil, listen to our prayers and make us worthy followers of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God sent us not only a prophet, but his Son, his son spoke the words of God's command for us. Are we listening? Today, do we hear his voice? Or do we remain anxious, distracted, and divided about the things of the world? Jesus teaches with authority, and even unclean spirits obey him. How can we ignore his call to share all the gifts we have received to further his work through the church? If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Lord, my God, when I in a 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be saved. For those watching this Mass through live stream, we'll now say the spiritual communion prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Olivia Morris, and I am in seventh grade at St. Gregory the Great Catholic School. Last March, we switched to virtual learning because of the pandemic, but our teachers and school administration never stopped teaching and guiding us to succeed for the rest of the school year. We continued to learn new things and consistently received new grades so we didn't fall behind. This year, we have been in person since August, and I am excited to take four high school credit classes next year. If you would like more information about how to become a saint at St. Gregory the Great Catholic School, please contact Amy Driscoll at 757-497-1811 to schedule a private tour and see how we have thrived even during COVID. 
Thank you for your time and God bless. The blessing of the throats will be available immediately following the 8.30 a.m. Mass on Tuesday morning for those who would like to receive the blessing in person. We will also have a blessing virtually at the end of the live stream Mass on Tuesday morning for those at home and in our school. We will have our first Thursday Holy Hour at 6.30 p.m. this week followed by nocturnal adoration until 7.30 a.m. on Friday morning. For adoration, please park in the spaces of our, at Our Lady of Guadalupe Gate entrance and use the door that goes directly into the chapel. Our ushers continue to help us exit with social distance following the completion of the recessional hymn. We thank you for sharing this liturgy with us today. And pray, when you hear God's voice this week, your hearts will be open. Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Our Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.